morning. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fahar HR Club webinar. My name is Nada and Abdullah Ali from Fahar. Today's session is about getting back to work, the code of emotional agility for well-being. Before we start the session, please have your paper and pencil. I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Dr. Abdel Qaddus Mohammed, Assistant Professor in Business from Higher College of Technology. He has over 17 years of academic and industry experience in human resource management in the Middle East. Welcome, Dr. Abdel Qaddus. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, all of you. Thank you, Nada, for the introduction. You are welcome, Doctor. Thank you very much. Good morning, all of you. Hope you all are fine and uh, safe with your families. I welcome you all for this webinar on emotional agility, which is a very, very important skill that is required in the current times. I am very glad, you know, to present this webinar and I really thank you all for joining from wherever you are. As per the research by Harvard University, we speak 16,000 words in a day and out of which you know, there are, we use this in many situations, but there are thousands of feelings, inner stories, and emotions that are unspoken. And it is very important to focus on this because this inner world is determining the mindset. And also, it is a fact that we cannot get what we want in life. There are most, there are, most of the time we face uncertain times like what we face now and we need to have an approach how to deal with this uncertain time. So emotional agility is an answer for this question of dealing with uncertain time, dealing with fear, dealing with, you know, the challenges of life and becoming successful. I have done a research uh, in March 2020 and I presented in uh, Society of Human Resources Conference in Dubai. As per the research, emotional intelligence or emotional agility is a very important skill for the job market in 2025. But within this three months, I could see we have switch on the time machine and we move forward five years and emotional agility is the skill required in the current time. This is the demand of the hour. So that is the reason I wanted to um, organize um, this webinar for you all. This webinar is divided into three sections. First of all, I will be giving introduction about the mindset and the psychology of mind. Then we'll talk about the different uh, ways the emotional agility can be uh, improved, different steps. Then we'll end up, uh, we'll end our session with the different tools required, you know, to help us uh, to face different challenges and be emotionally agile. Before I get into the details of my seminar, I would like to organize a poll on a question, this is to understand where, you know, what are your inner experiences? A question is, what would be one concern on the top of your mind as you start returning back to offices? Our technical team will be working on the uh, results and I'll be sharing these results with you at the end of this session. Please, I request all of you to grab a paper and pencil and I want you to draw a smiley with the left hand if you are a right-hander and if you are a left-hander, I want you to draw with the right hand, vice versa. 
I want you to draw a smiley as it is shown on the screen. You have 30 seconds to complete. And I want you to share your experience in the chat box. Do I have access to the chat box? It seems I don't have access to the chat box, but um, what? Yeah, please, please. Please, I want all of you to try and enjoy this experience of drawing a smiley with your left hand if you're the right hander and vice versa. Want to see the result? Sorry for the delay, it is taking time to get the access. As it is taking time to have access to the uh, chat box, you know, I want to say that this kind of experiences we face every day in life, that before we initiate anything unknown, you know, we have fear factor, we have anxiousness. And but once we have courage to, you know, take up this action, take up this activity. Once we finish this activity, you know, we'll end up with satisfaction. So this is the same thing applies in all the situations for us. You know, instead of going away from fear, instead of going away from the uncertainties, the only solution to have to solve it to first face it. Okay. So, so whatever the mind can conceive and believe the mind can achieve. This is what uh, Napoleon Hill said. There is nothing like which is impossible for us to achieve. The only thing to be done is the action must be taken by you. You know, the initiative must be taken by you. So we have different situations in life and different situations create different types of thoughts. And each thought will create different types of responses that those responses are some responses are emotional responses and some responses are physical responses this theory we call it in psychology 
it is cognitive behavior theory but before we get into that i want to ask you to identify what is happening in the picture again because of this technical limitation i want to you know share with you that this is a picture uh, giving different meanings to different people talking about the perception um, and uh, we understand different things not as they are but as we understand so this is where this is what is the most important reason for different types of conflicts in our life so we don't see the things as they are we see things as we are this is what is uh, an important aspect if once we understand this essence then it's easy for us you know to be uh, psychologically strong and and also uh, it will help us in having the real kind of communication that is required to solve uh, problematic situations so like i said different situations we have we go to office we go to uh, market we we meet family members and each situation is different and each situation is triggering um, uh, different types of problems so like for example we go to the, i go to the office and i am criticized by my boss in a meeting so this is an example of a situation if this happens it will lead into first of all a thought you know my mind start working and um, i suddenly start feeling that i am not good enough this is a thought that that pops up and once after that this will result in two kind of reactions physical and emotional reactions these are uh, you know how do i feel how do i feel is all about emotions it can be feeling anxious feeling uh, worthless angry fear these are some of the emotions as well as when we talk about the physical reactions maybe we feel tired we we have high palpitations and we feel nervousness and all this is determining our our behavior uh, in life so the most important element in this in this uh, model is it is not the situation it is a thought you know whatever the kind of situation it may be the way we understand the situation will have different types of results in terms of emotions physical reactions and behavior so like i said in the beginning we will not get a situation what we want we always have a situation that is against our will so it is very important for us you know to understand the situation try to uh, know the issue then have a perception about that which can give us which can guide us in a in a right behavior so like what i said we are what we think we are so thoughts will give beliefs beliefs will give feelings and feelings will give different actions so we cannot live positive life positive life with a negative mind so if we see this picture here this is a story from our childhood uh, i'm sure you are um, you know recollecting those uh, memories Uh, it's a story of a small elephant which is a very naughty when it was tied with a chain it tries to break it okay it gets injured and it will not become successful so the attempt of failure was you know fitted into the mind of this small elephant when it becomes big you tie this elephant with a small rope you know it again it will never try to break it because it has this experience of childhood you know of not being able to be successfully breaking it so the essence of this story is that our belief system is impacting what we think you know if we have a strong belief system you know it will have very positive results a boy a 6 year old boy 
who was you know having heart issues health issues poverty challenges could become a champion footballer a richest sports person only possible with the strong belief system not only that oh, we take the story of emirates airline 1985 it started with two planes you know from dubai to karachi and dubai to bombay these two planes were uh, you know hired from pia this is pakistan international airline and this is how the company started but as on today this is the world's biggest airline you know flying 26000 flights for 140 um, cities of 80 countries so this is again is a, is an example of the resilience this is an example of a strong belief system and also dubai is a very good example of resilience how the way it developed in a very short period of time is an example for the world that if you have strong belief system everything can be achieved so jk rowling i'm sure you are aware of her she is the author of harry potter series she was jobless single mother fought depression rejected by 12 publishers but become a richest author only because of her strong belief system that she can be successful okay a very important success story of my college that is um, hct higher college of technology a digital campus program for spring because of the covid 19 we have to move from face to face teaching to the online teaching and this is a very very uh, good success story to learn uh, that how a resilient team how a resilient leadership how uh, you know a, a team which has a strong belief can achieve what it wants so we catered around 22000 students 1200 faculties and the support staff all have gone online and to achieve this mission of a digital campus and we are more than successful in this mission so all these are you know different examples of being resilient and and if this all talks about if we believe in what we want we can achieve you know the mindset can make or 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 break it okay so i wanted to have this discussion question is it possible we bore now with the chat box or not yet is it on yeah please i want to i want to um, know your comments on this uh, discussion question please okay great so there are two types of thoughts you know positive and negative we all know but there are ways to move from negative thinking to positive thinking you know that is like by means of gratitude being thankful to what we have you know if something we cannot it is impossible for us to achieve it will it is impossible but we have to accept it and and be happy with what we have like for example if we write, write down three uh, negative thoughts you know and for example a negative thought of you know um, uh, body pains due to work from home or or uh, if you are working from home maybe your kids are uh, driving crazy these are negative feelings if we convert this negative into positive by means of gratitude it can be like for example for uh, for a body to be tired uh, you know during the uh, work from home a body is alive and functioning right there are many people who are getting sick there are many people who are getting infected um, so in that way you should feel thankful to yourself and also um when we are working at home definitely the kids drive crazy and they disturb us in our official work but 
again, we have to be thankful. If, if, it, if you see the positive side, yes, you have children to love, you have somebody, you know, a social support. So any negative thought can be converted into the positive thought, you know, by just change in a mindset, which takes only a few seconds. So if you still feel, you know, if you still go like, as a human, we always have the tendency to, you know, to go to automatic negative thoughts, uh, you know, fine, it is normal, don't judge yourself, it's normal, and simply practice gratitude exercise. Okay, if we do this practice, and it will become our nature. Okay, so there are, if we analyze our brain system, there are three types of three components, important components, that is thinking brain, emotional brain, and uh, memory brain. Okay, thinking brain is considered to be a prefrontal cortex, which is analyzing information, um, you know, observing uh, in, in the details and helping the human to, you know, make decisions. There is an uh, emotional brain, which is called as an amygdala, uh, the job of amygdala is to protect from something which is unknown, okay? And there is something called uh, hippocampus, which is basically uh, storing all our uh, memories. What happens is when we meet fearful or difficult situations, thinking brain is cut off from the emotional brain, okay? There is always tug of war between thinking brain and the, um, and the emotional brain. And uh, most of the time, if we don't practice, uh, you know, to be mindful, then there is a high chance that the, the emotional brain will take the control of the, um, of the thinking process. And this is called as emotional hijack. So it will stop the blood flow to the prefrontal cortex and will stop functioning and all the emotional brain will, uh, you know, come forward. So if the, you know, uh, feeling a brain cut off from the thinking brain, this is what we call it as, you know, uh, emotion, uh, the um, amygdala hijack. So if this amygdala hijack happens, what you see on the screen, such situations occur in our life. This is a very good example from the World Cup. Uh, I, I remember this is a, ga a game between France and Italy. Uh, some confrontation happened between the players and the captain Zidane, uh, you know, um, had um, some kind of a physical um, fight between with the other player and he was shown the red card and it resulted in a loss to the team. So after the match, the, the people consulted uh, Zidane and asked him uh, why such a thing happened. And he said, I feel sorry, I could not control myself and because of that, my team lost the World Cup. So such situations are, are part of our life where amygdala hijack, the emotional brain taking control of our brain system and which is not giving chance for a thinking brain to act. So this is very important for us to, you know, uh, to activate our, you know, thinking brain and, and also reduce the, uh, the amygdala or situational survival. Uh, so when we have low emotion, it is always people are calm and relaxed, but the high emotions always lead with anger, fear, excitement, love, um, you know, and frustration. So it is very important for us to keep the amygdala always checked and make sure it is not active uh, and, 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 and also the thinking brain is taking control of our action. So if this happens, this, what the, the, the health results are, you know, cortisol uh, is released in the body and this will have negative effects on our blood sugar, blood pressure, you know, uh, effect on the memory, sensitivity, pain and you know, suppression of uh, immune system, these are all the negative effects that happens. If amygdala hijack happens and because of that cortisol releases from the body and that will have these um, health effects on our body. So 
the yes i also wanted to do this exercise i'm skipping yeah how to less trigger the uh, you know amygdala this is the objective so it can be possible by developing a habit of focus you have to have mindfulness we'll talk about this more we have to take care of ourselves self management self compassion emotional intelligence which is basically you know yourself and also you know others um, you know to manage better relationships all these aspects must be you know practiced and which should become the nature so this is what we call it as emotionally agile so the main topic of emotional agility we have so many emotions basically eight types of emotions anger fear anticipation uh, surprise joy disgust trust um, so if there is a situation like this you know uh, you are for example you are a guard having a lever in your hand to change the tracks there are two tracks one is unused railway track where one child is playing and there is another railway track where you know so many children are playing and on the track the train is coming what decision you make so like this such such decisions are very critical and uh, there can there is not like a perfect answer for these questions it's all depends on our emotional ability you know how we control our emotions and take the uh, action to have minimum impact on others so basically emotions are like what i said in the beginning these are feelings derived from different situations and also relationship with people so there is an american scientist robert uh, prochek he has um, designed this wheel of emotions which is um, talking about basically the eight emotions that we discussed earlier and also intensity of these emotions into the different categories you know it seems there are there are 6000 emotion uh, emotion related words which are in the dictionary but only 12 of them we use in our life so this is what emotions and emotional intelligence is is a huge subject you know which is um, affecting most of our life so humans and business relationships are are completely uh, based on emotions companies are uh, surviving you know by making their customers clients feel better you know the we only remember how someone made us feel so this is where the emotions comes into the picture uh, the, uh, and also this is uh, not only our personal life but also professional life the way uh, we make other people feel can have influence on the results and the productivity of our, of our job so based on these model the companies uh, have also um, uh, want to companies also want to connect with the customers through different brands which are in different colors in form of optimism uh, friendly excitement creative trust you know is each of these emotion is of different color so this is again is a way companies are connecting with their customers emotionally so the second question i want to organize as a poll what is you know as a what is your uh, dominant emotion which is which of the following emotion is impacting your mindset these days please uh, vote for it we'll discuss the results uh, at the end of the session are emotions contagious and what are the positives and negatives contagious means emotions are passed from one person to the other person if you are angry then the definitely your anger is expressed on other people if you are happy that will again be passed to other people so in a professional life it is very important that uh, we have to you know have a positive emotion which can you know even it is going to other person which is considered to be a, a, a very a positive sign but negative emotions must be 
um, you know, must not be exhibited because these are having danger of passing on to other people. So the biggest gift of our life is we can choose, we can, even we can choose our uh, emotions. But when we choose anything in our life, this is, uh, you know, based on our belief system. Belief system is all about our identity. What is your brand name? What is your characteristic that differentiates you from others? Okay, in, in the labor market, this is a very important um, uh, term. We call it as employee branding. In the same way, in our uh, social life also, everybody has their identity. And once you have this identity, identity is based on the beliefs and values and skills and behaviors, and that will help us in uh, achieving the results. So it is very important for us to decide uh, what we want based on these belief and value systems. So there's also um, you know, um, a narration that big boys don't cry. Uh, you know, is it right? Uh, as per the philosophy of uh, emotional agility, uh, this concept is, is wrong, which means we cannot hide or we cannot suppress, uh, you know, somebody's emotion. And even if somebody is crying, yeah, let them cry. They have to cry because this is, this is the way they can express themselves. So... Um, like what I said in the beginning, that emotional agility is all about facing the fear, facing the problem, facing the challenges. So if somebody is having a negative emotion, which is good, do not try to suppress this. Rather than we should try to um, you know, understand the source of this neg negative emotion and try to uh, solve this. So emotional agility is all about, you know, um, navigating through these inner experiences, you know, to lead our thriving and uh, intentional life. So it's a process that helps us, you know, to have self-acceptance, uh, clear-sightedness, and an open mind. It also doesn't mean that we need to ignore our difficult emotions, thoughts. We have to continue these difficult emotions and face it courageously as well as um, compassion, compassionately. So how do I become emotionally agile? What are the steps I can, uh, I can follow? So I have a formula for that FDVM. This is fixed deposit via mail. So what happens in this is first, any difficult situation, any difficult emotion we, we meet, uh, we have to face first cannot ignore the difficult thoughts and emotions. We have to face it willfully, you know, curiously and, and kind with kindness. And also we have to detach our feelings from the actual realities of those emotions. And based on the value system, like we have certain things which are important for us. So any thought that is helping me to uh, to meet my value system, any thought which is according to my value system, I need to accept those feelings. If any thought which is against my value system, this is, um, you know, need to be rejected and this need to be, you know, diverted into the uh, different uh, energy types. We will talk more about this later on. So why it is difficult for a human being to be emotionally agile it is because of you know we are we have rigid thoughts you know we are what our belief system is you know we are hooked with our thinking uh, you know feelings and behaviors you know that are most of the time do not solve the purpose and which is the main reason for the depression and anxiety we face and rigid reactions are basically from our old self defeating stories like, you know, I can't achieve this goal. I am not good at this. I am not a social person. People do not like me, do not trust me. This is all our stories we carry throughout our life, which are fixed in our belief system, which are not realities, which are only 
uh, you know perceptions uh, what we have learned all over the life so it's okay to have neg uh, negative emotions because as a human it is it, it is um, it is fine to have it but important um, is to identify these feelings you know understand the source from where these feelings are coming and uh, finding a solution so so next is unhooking the rigid thoughts yes rigid thoughts are already fixed in our brain brain but we have to uh, you know uh, understand and and detach it from our reality so how to do that is basically we should never treat these feelings as facts okay like sometimes if, if you meet one failure or you don't meet an objective in your uh, job you always feel shame that okay in the last job also i could not do it and the current job also i am the same so uh, this is actually uh, a not right we we should you know um, not treat our feelings like they are facts of our life and also we uh, sometimes avoid those situations that can you know um, uh, evoke our negative thoughts like for example if you are shy social shy and you don't uh, go to attend meetings you don't meet um, uh, anybody so this again you are doing it because you are still hooking on to your old thoughts it is high time for you to realize that it is for you to unhook those rigid thoughts and come out of it so um can we ignore these troubling thoughts and emotions the answer is no okay um we should not ignore because when we ignore these negative thoughts it will result in emotional leakage which is you know uh, in form of physical and emotional responses which are not good for the uh, health as well as the uh, mental as well as the physical health and also in, we also sometimes we try to suppress those emotions or we try to live with those emotions so hala this is my fate this is what i have and i need to live with it again such kind of philosophy is wrong again whatever is your thinking as your fate is again is your perception may not be your uh, reality so this again uh, the mindset change need to happen so again there is a, a narration uh, about the feeling of happiness okay you have a problem don't think about the problem okay always feel happy you know this again just feeling of a happiness will not solve the problem just feeling going away from the problems will not solve a problem so what we have to do is um, you know we fine it's fine to have be happy it's it's good for our health it is good for the positive mood but just feeling of a happiness will not result it, it need to have in some a certain action plan okay and also at the same time we should not you know um ignore the negative emotions we cannot ignore the negative emotions okay it has to Uh, come together it has you have to have a positive emotions and negative emotions both have to be managed together uh, you know to have a right results we cannot only go with the narration that okay i want to be happy and i will focus on only positives no this might not help us so we have to see things from different perspective we'll talk about this so can we be emotionally agile and flexible yes the answer is yes the goal is to be aware of our emotions accept it you know and at peace with them so how to do that the same steps what we discussed before are in detail you know most important is 80% of the success is showing up you cannot pass the exam unless you go and attempt the exam so this is where we have to face adversities we have to face problems we have to face fears that you know uh, first step for that is you have to face you have to show up okay once you show up you also have to acknowledge your thoughts you know without believing okay, you have to just acknowledge you have to say okay i am just noticing that i am angry i am noticing that i am sad i am noticing that 
somebody doesn't like me. So these are only the, the initial feelings you develop, which are you should never believe those. This is only an initial stage. You should think that these are only thoughts which are coming to your mind. And we also need to label these emotions. You know, words are powerful. You know, wrong words can start wars. So in the same way, the wrong labeling of emotions can also have, um, can result in uh, serious emotional issues. So uh, there is a also uh, uh, a narration that I am angry, I am sad. Actually, it is not you who is sad. You know, it is not you who is angry. It is your feeling. It is your thought that is, uh, you know, making you feel like that. So when you when you take the things on your side that instead of saying I'm feeling angry, you say I am angry, then this will let you down completely. Instead of you manage it completely, uh, what will happen is this will have uh, negative effects and this will, uh, you know, impact your uh, mood. So it is very important for us to be compassionate with ourselves and acknowledge our thoughts and also label those thoughts properly. You know, do not take it, those feelings personally and take it like I am noticing that I am angry. This is like you are separating your thought from you. So this is in that way uh, you can separate, you know, what you feel and what is a reality. The second thing is detachment. You know, you need to create a space between, you know, I am having a thought, I am a loser. Like, for example, we have these negative thoughts. It's fine, you know, you, you, you should take it in a, in a positive way that, okay, this is not only the thought I am getting, I am also getting some other thoughts. And also, um, you know, you, it's not new for me. Every day I get this. There are so many thoughts I get this. I will only act on the ones which will help me, you know, to be happy in life. This is, again, you are connecting those thoughts with your value systems. And these value systems can help you to decide which thought to be allowed and which thought to be, you know, rejected by you. So you can accept the cravings, you know, of, of not uh, uh, reacting to those uh, thoughts. You're not suppressing here. You're trying to understand those thoughts. And very important tool can be here. You know, you can write those thought uh, letters, thought experiences, okay, which can help you uh, understand it from your, uh, from the different perspective. So this is called uh, basically uh, uh, an exercise of, you know, writing letter to yourself. Okay, for example, um, you write to yourself that are you feeling down right now? And also the response also you will give to yourself that when I'm feeling down, I like to talk to someone. There are many people whom I can talk and, you know, and also I can call people on this number and hope you are doing well soon. So I am your friend. So this is again, what is happening is you are writing to yourself about your feelings, about those thoughts. And also if that such thought is coming, what kind of action you will be taking. So if you write this, this will be like an affirmation that you will not you know, react in a, in a negative way. So this is a, one kind of a tool that can help us in, in, in solving, in understanding different types of thoughts and emotions, especially the negative ones. So if you come across recognizing stress in yourself with the different uh, thinking symptoms, emotional symptoms, and physical symptoms, you know, UAE National Program for Happiness and Wellbeing, you know, they have announced, you know, mental health online. You can take this uh, support of this service and you can inform them about your issue. They will connect it to the uh, right expert. So how to detach, you know, from the uh, actual uh, negative uh, situation and how you perceive it? It's basically through different practices of breathing, 
uh, practices of mindfulness, listening to music. You know, you should always think, you know, uh, um, uh, different experiences as 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 process. You know, as a long term uh, process because this long term process will have different different events. If you fail in one event, it doesn't mean that you will be failing in all events. It will not hamper you. In achieving the goal, so always think in a long-term perspective. Even you fail in the short term, it's fine. Accept it, learn from it, and and also move ahead. You know, towards the long-term goal, and also make humor as part of life. Change your viewpoint. Always have an empathy. Try to understand from different perspectives. Especially if you are a leader, uh, it is important for you to know. The perspective of your people, your staff members. So to be empathetic is 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 a very important tool to be, uh, you know, emotionally agile. Without empathy, it is very difficult, you know, to be emotionally intelligent or emotionally uh, agile. So and also, like I said, uh, emotional uh, language should be used properly. The labeling of those emotions should always say i am having a thought okay that i am worthless it's only a thought it's not you who is worthless it is a thought that is telling you that you are worthless if you are able to separate this then that is the beginning of your success okay always think yourself from the third person's point of view and very importantly we have to let go things we should not have expectations. Yes, fine, but uh, you know, relations, grudges, experiences—all those experiences, if they are not helping you to be in a right mood, just let it go, because this will affect your health and your mental health. And mental health will have effect on your physical health. Physical health will have effect on your family, and this will might have a very long term. Um, you know, negative results. So it's very important, you know, to understand this. And if any thought, any uh, emotion or behavior or a situation that is not helping you, um, you know, to be in a right frame of mind, just let it go. Okay. And also emotional uh, driftwood, which is basically uh, we have to, you know, uh, hold all our emotions to something which is worthful, worthwhile, that is resulting in, in, in better results in achieving our goals. You know, if you are angry, it's fine. Convert that anger into the right channel to achieve, uh, you know, the goal. So it is also possible that you convert those negative emotions into the positive results, again, by means of mindset so values driven decision making is very important like i said before you know when you are aware of what you care about you know you can be free from the things which you don't care so how to know that is a, a british scientist wr uh, miller he has come with the list of values which can help us in uh, during the challenging times so if once we write those our own values then we can decide which emotion is helping me to achieve this value, to you know, to follow this value system. Then this can be guidelines for our decision making: which emotion to accept, which feeling to accept, which uh, feeling to reject. So it's not enough to have values; you have to live with those values. You know, you need to walk into the fear with values as a guide towards, you know what matters to you courage is you know it's not about absence of fear it's about you know fear walking so values like i said it helps us in decision making like for example we have to decide between sleeping and watching so for example if you have um, you know a value system of, of discipline um, then you will say okay i need to i will sleep i will not waste my time you know in watching the tv like that, if you have a feeling that I want to eat ice cream, so again, this is against the value of you are responsible father, you want to be healthy. So again, this is 
not helping you to meet this value system. So halas, you will be healthy, you will not eat ice. So it is also that we are hooked to the difficult thoughts which make us move away from our values. So it's important to unhook those thoughts, you know, put it in the right perspective. Uh, this was the exercise I wanted to do, but again, because of the technical limitations, we are not in a position to do it. So the poll three question, please, I want all of you to vote. What are the techniques of self-care you follow these days? Okay. So measuring emotional agility, this is uh, the, the final component of my uh, session. Uh, there are different tools available in the market. Most of them are paid tools. You can go there, you can buy, purchase online, and you can attempt to answer those questions. This will give you a level of emotional intelligence. And this will also give you suggestions what areas you can improve on. Okay, so I have this emotional agility questionnaire. Um, which with you i will share it with you on the screen can it be possible one open no it's gone it's open open again in the powerpoint oh we don't want to share i think we lost the link Yeah, emotional agility questionnaire is basically um, assessing your emotions. Uh, I'll share it with you later, which is 15 questions, uh, which is focusing on different areas of emotional agility. Like if the area of improvement is about the self-awareness, how do you understand yourself? It is also, so it is very important that before we manage others, before we understand others, and ourselves there are techniques of mindfulness you know keeping uh, your journal of where you write your different emotional situations and experiences and also you do your own SWOT analysis what are my strengths weaknesses, and opportunities and also seeking feedback from others can help us you know to be self-aware and also the second element of emotional agility is self-regulation. It is very important for us you know, to be in control of ourselves. You know, to develop these skills, we need to manage our emotions effectively. You know, if we get angry, know that what triggers are making you feel angry. Okay, and follow the deep breathing exercises, you know, calm you down and also give some time to yourself, you know, to pause before you respond to your emails or, or, or personal communications. Always better to think before you respond. And also, there are many people, um, uh, they always have blame game. Okay, I am not getting a better job because my father did not allow me to study well. Uh, okay, I was poor because of that. I have, uh, I am suffering this today. So this is all our irresponsible ways of thinking. Always, you have to be accountable for your actions. You know, you you are responsible for your fate. The 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 way you act on you, on yourself, will uh, determine what you will achieve tomorrow. So it is important for to be responsible for your acts, responsible for your actions, you know, that will always have uh, a positive perspective for our life. And that is what I said, reacting, whenever we react, you know, we have to stop, think, and then react. So always press a pause button before you react. Okay, and also to control our amygdala, we have to do one thing at a time, never skip your breakfast and also learn mindfulness. Mindfulness is about focusing on the, the action, what you are doing. We will talk about more this in the coming slides. So the, another aspect, another component of emotional agility is self-motivation. 
okay this is also motivation is two types like intrinsic and extrinsic intrinsic motivation is how you feel about yourself how you feel confident about yourself and extrinsic motivation is you are motivated by you know salary by reward or awards so these are secondary aspects the most important is how you keep your mood well how you keep yourself intrinsically motivated so to do that you need to develop self discipline always look for you know um for celebration of small wins you know give a sense of accomplishments okay set yourself long term goals which will always keep you track and also most of the time we feel we meet people okay when i was studying uh, i i my goal was to pass the school exam then the college then the a uh, job i have a job i have a better life what next they always say that okay i am not happy with what i am doing that means there is some problem in your purpose you are not deciding your goals for yourself the goals are decided by external factors external validations because your father asks you to do something you are friend is asking you to do something you were you have been doing it but at later stages you realize that okay this is not what i want you know for me the purpose is different so this is where it is very important that we need to rediscover our purpose to be you know calm and emotionally agile unless we know our purpose we cannot be uh, we are uh, if we don't know our purpose we are always feeling disturbed which can have impact on our emotions so there are different techniques of you know boosting of uh, emotional quotient that is don't ignore the feeling of others monitor your own emotions you know let go of your grudges get proper sleep rest you know always be more positive show appreciation to others okay and the last um, before last component we have one more component that is empathy empathy is all about how you understand you know from the other's perspective you know it is also it is it is very important that we need to listen to other people if we don't listen we can't understand what they are talking about try not to interpret uh, interrupt or talk about your own feelings when the discussion is happening when the conversation is happening and very importantly you also have to look at the body language of a person you know when you when they speak and try to understand their emotions which can help you you know to uh, to have uh, a different perspective and try to understand from the other person's point of view especially if you are a manager this empathy is a very important skill to have the last emotional agility skill is a social skill how we deal with other people so it is possible you know for us to develop a better social skills by learning how to communicate how to develop trust how to develop a rapport with others and also we need to learn how to avoid or how to face different conflicts and difficult situations overall the social skills if if we are shy then this is again a uh, building self confidence will take some time but even though you should always try to build and to to face uncomfortable social situations to develop your social skills so these are some of the techniques of social awareness yeah another very important uh, component which i want to focus is on the positive uh, body language okay so we are part of the society if you are personally and professional life everybody is observing us you know the way we walk the way we speak the way we deal with others so if you have a positive body language this will help you to have positive social connections positive social relations with people so number one is how do you walk your physical actions express our mental attitude always when you talk to people you know you need to maintain eye contact person to person and also 
when you walk, you have to walk straight steps, balance, upright posture, you know, shoulders must be back, you know, drop, uh, drop shoulders, uh, you know, is, is again, it looks you are carrying some burden uh, on your shoulders, which is again is, is a negative sign. Okay, and also head and eyes down is again is a pessimistic uh, symbol, which is again, which shows that you are not confident about yourself and hesitant steps, timidity, you know, you don't follow the straight steps, you, you go here and there and and when you walk like that, again, this will give you indication that you're not confident of yourself. So walking straight, maintaining eye contact is, is again, is, is considered to be a positive body language. And moderate um, tone your voice, express your courage and confidence. Low voice is good, but it should not be too low that it looks uh, to people that you're not confident. And also, very importantly, you need to have a smile on your face. Speak positive and good for others. Handshake, again, is a first impression. Um, again, uh, it has to be firm. It has to be proper. Um, and it, again, needs to be, uh, you know, firm. And, and again, there are some people who, who with low confidence, have just, if you, if you ask, if you give them for a shake hand, they just give you a finger or they just give you a half hand. Limp, this is called limp shake hand, which is, again, is a, low indicator of low confidence so uh, another concept of emotional intelligence is mindfulness which is basically attend paying attention to uh, what we know is but in a particular way which is with curiosity with purpose and you know being in the present moment and without any judgment so there are a lot of literature information available online to be mindful and this will be the skill of the future and there are many training programs there are many companies there are many universities starting mindfulness programs uh, because it is considered to be a very very important skill in the current as well as in the future times the last technique is to be mindful is a snack technique it is something similar to what we discussed before uh, you know giving pause button before we take any action this is also similar to that stop notice accept you know curious and and kindness it, it what it says is uh, basically you need to um, ground yourself with the questions about your experiences and environment what am i feeling what can i do right now to have positive results from this feeling and when you feel you have to you know respond to yourself and others you know with kindness and observe how you know that keeps things you know get back on track so this is a snack technique again uh, which will help us to be mindful to be uh, to achieve uh, positive results uh, when we have uh, you know different uh, difficult situations or or negative feelings so i want to conclude this session by saying that emotional agility is a process that enables us to navigate you know through uh, twists and turns of life with self confidence you know and open mind and it is not at all um, about you know ignoring those difficult thoughts there are different techniques what i said you have to face the difficulty you have to face the adversity you have to face the problems detach your feelings from realities and when you decide whether to allow those unwanted feelings, you have to compare it with your value systems. If your value systems, if any feeling is helping you, you know, to achieve your values, then allow such a feeling. If any feeling that is not helping you according to your values, ignore those feelings. And we always have to learn, move on uh, with life because it's not one incident or two incidents or it's not one situation or two situations that will determine the future it's a long-term goal that is where we have to keep our eye and self-awareness is a component of this emotional agility we have to learn mindfulness we have to also keep a journal write about uh, you know what are different experiences we go through and what are the learnings from those experiences 
strength, weakness, opportunity, threat analysis, and very importantly, asking feedback from your boss, from your colleagues, from your subordinates, and try to learn from those mistakes. Self-regulation is a second component of this emotional agility, which again, you have to control yourself by calming yourself by different breathing exercises. Give yourself time to pause before you respond to any request, either it may be email or face to face. Then the self motivation is again is, is a very important component of emotional agility. Like I said, intrinsic motivation is very important than the extrinsic. So the way you feel confident about yourself, the way you feel happy about yourself can determine the mood of your team because emotions are contagious. If the manager is happy, the team is happy. So self-motivation is, is a very important aspect to be considered, um, you know, especially when you are struggling, um, you know, to achieve certain purposes in life. Empathy a very, very, very important component of the uh, emotional agility. You know, it's simply thinking about what are the viewpoints of other people. You have to think from their point of view. Okay, for that, you have to use the active listening to understand their point of view, as well as, you know, the social skills which will help us, you know, to, to have good relationship with people, uh, you know, this can be improved through communication skills, rapport building, conflict management, and negotiation skills. So I conclude my webinar with the quote that forests renew themselves through natural disturbances such as wind, fire, insects. And this is, these disturbances result in creation of new forests. So my suggestion would be never quit human being has been fighting with many uncertainties very successfully. The only thing to focus on our mindset, allow only positive thoughts, okay, which can, which are according to our values, which can help us in achieving the goals. So thank you very, very much for uh, attending the session. If you have any questions, I'll be very glad to accept. Glad to accept and answer. Uh, is it shown on the screen? Yeah, please. Yeah, question number one, yes. So it looks like that the, the most important um, uh, concern for you is the uh, safety, which is 40%, and the remaining is job security, second one. Okay, wonderful. Can we go back to the next one, please? Yes. Which of the following emotion is impacting your mindset? Fear and happiness. Yes, mashallah, I could see uh, positiveness, positivity around. And even this difficult time, there are people who are positive, which is really a very, very good sign. Next question. Talking about... Yes, the uh, important uh, uh, tool they are using to have, you know, um, the emotionally uh, emotional agility, the so, uh, social distancing, meditation, self-care techniques. The highest one is social distancing. Yes, yeah, this is the requirement of the time, and uh, taking healthy food. Yes, very very. Thank you very, very much. I'll be glad to answer questions if you have. Uh, is, can I move? Can I stand?
Thank you. Yes, thank you. Interesting, uh, interesting talk, Dr. Abdel Qaddus. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we have some questions from the participation. Here, someone asking, uh, I don't know her or his name, but asking how, how can I motivate my boss if without knowing their mindset can they reply? Yes, wonderful question. Yeah. Thank you yeah. very much. When but, I was in the college. Yeah, I don't know the name. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when I was in a college, I read a book, 48 Laws of Power. And in that book, 48 laws were mentioned how to be successful in life, how to achieve power. The first law that says never go against your boss mm -hmm. yes boss is not right always it is it is normal i have seen in this in many countries it is not uh, related to one kind of a place or one workplace uh, how to make your boss happy it's important that you communicate with the boss clarify what kind of expectations he has from you. Always keep the boss informed about the progress, what you achieve. Have good rapport with them, with more communication, with your polite behavior. And I'm sure this can help you to, you know, to have better relationship with the boss. And again, most of the times it is seen that bosses it's it's only our perception that we think that okay this boss doesn't like me but once you start communicating once you start building relationship with them the perceptions generally proven wrong so my advice would be start communication initiate uh, discussions with what exactly are the expectations and try to work on those expectations with sincerity, dedication, and hard work. Thank you, Doctor. We have another question from Tansi. Uh, she saying, most of the time, not with self, but to handle teens, it's difficult. Any key points to keep in mind while dealing with them? This is a team management question. Again, um, she's she's saying most of the time, not with self, but to handle teams. It's, it's uh, maybe she she means teams. It's difficult. Any key points to keep in mind while dealing with them? Yeah, I think I think she she's asking about teams. Yeah, again, it's a great question in this current time because we are moving. If you are a manager, it is important to not only keep the individuals happy, but also uh, the teams to be in a right frame of mind, in a positive uh, you know, mindset. So to make your teams more happy, this is a, a, a broader subject, which is, again, you know, in a coaching, we call it as individual coaching and the team coaching, which is uh, a very uh, important aspect. So how to deal with that again, uh, communicate with the team members, give them challenging tasks so that all team members work together and also have a, a periodic uh, review of those team achievements and also have some kind of a rewards for people who are contributing to the team and helping the team to uh, achieve those targets. So overall, what I mean is again here also as a manager, communication is very important. You know, like I said, emotions are contagious. Your happy mood can also have effect your team. So you 
you as a manager must be confident, must be uh, positive with your team. That will have positive impact and positive culture in the team. I hope I have answered the question. Hopefully. Uh, anyone have any question? Please write your question down. So Dr. Abdus will be happy to, to answer you. Please. Yeah. Let's check. Um, I have only these two questions from Tansim and Ajna, I think, from Ministry of Education. That's it. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very, very much for participating uh, in this session. I enjoyed the session and hopefully see you soon. Thank you very, very much to Fahad Thank you. Thank as well as the city team for making this program successful. Thank you very, very much. Take care of yourself and salam alaikum. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdul Quddus, for your Thank time you. and for your very big contribution. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, uh, may I thank you also very much for your participation. I hope you enjoyed this session. Stay home, stay safe. Goodbye.